Today we have the president of Nara in the building. <laughs> Nuki, how you doing, man? Yeah, good, cuz. Hey, what have you been up to, bro? Um, just working on music and that, eh? Chilling, chilling and whatnot. Yeah, been in the lab, getting busy. I seen you being a busy man. You're working on a song that's actually coming out soon, right? Yeah, bro. So, um, yeah, uh, I got a song coming out Friday. Uh, Mungo, it's a new one. Linked up Solo and Mansus. Yeah, getting shit done. Yeah. What was the go behind that? Because I seen you guys were shooting a video. What's the theme on it? Um, so like the, the song's kind of it's based off um like the old YouTube fight uh, Mungo versus Greg Brown. So um yeah. Just kind of was one of those nights I was in the studio, I was a bit lit, you know what I mean? So just like an energetic type vibe and done the thing. And then, yeah, sent it off to Mansus and Solo for the boys to do what they do on it. And then, yeah, we ended up with this little banger that we're going to drop on Friday. Nice, bro. Um, for the for those who don't know who you are yet, yeah, I'm familiar with you, you know, because we got a new audience in there and this is your first time on DME. Kind of give us a quick run back and who you are and where you grew up and all that. Um, yeah, so I'm uh, yeah from Nara, down on the south coast. It's a little bit further down than uh, Wollongong. Um, born and raised there. Been mucking around in Sydney here for a couple of years, doing music and that. But yeah, you and man from the south coast. Cool. You grew up there most of your life or you moved around a bit? Or how did it go? <coughs> uh, nah, bros. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, Nara the whole time until I was like, 17, uh, kicked out of school and then kind of just, yeah, packed me bags and left and floating around the city ever since, you know what I mean? Like, um, once that happened, I kind of felt like, yeah, it's time to leave. So I came up here and just focused on music and whatnot. Now, did you start rapping before you moved out of Nara or did you kind of start once you moved out of there? Um, no, so I was, I was rapping, rapping in Nara. Um, yeah. Yeah, just kicking back at the little youth centre there back in the days, doing the thing. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what prompted the move to, eh? Like, I felt like uh, I've done all I could in Nara and, um, you know, so I needed, needed to get out and give it a crack elsewhere. I mean, it's a small town, right? So there's not many opportunities, I guess? Yeah, bro, 100%. 100%. So, you know, <clears throat> growing up, it was... You know, the, the options that were put in my face all the time, like, during school and shit was, just, you know, just football or crime. That was, like, really the only only shit displayed or, you know, what what we was expected to do, you know what I mean? Like, the teachers used to say it was a waste of space, waste of time, this and that. I was going to end up buying bars from my uncles and whatnot. So, fucking, yeah, it was always... Football or, or crime and, um, you know, lucky I had a big cousin, Selway, he um, was from Newcastle and, you know, being in the city and shit, I like, was exposed to different things and used to do a lot of music and, like, dude was my idol, so, yeah, he started rapping and, you know, he, he was a gun and, yeah, I started rapping purely for the fact he was doing it and I thought that it was mad shit, you know what I mean, like, cousin from the city making music, I was like, oh, fuck yeah, I'm going to do that. So it kind of opened up a another lane, which I didn't think was there before. I just kind of, you know, it's fucking turned into what it, what it is now, yeah. So he's actually the reason why he started making music due of his inspiration. Yeah, man, 100%. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be doing it. You know, just, yeah. Then, then yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. So how long have you been rapping in total now? Um... Man, I kind of lost count, eh? Yeah. Um, over 10 years or whatever, like, just... But, yeah, chipping away at it and whatnot. Because I've seen, like, on TV, you actually went to America back in the days, right? Is that correct? Yeah, man, so, um, I went over... That was, like, the the year after I left Now. It was one of the first things i kind of done, like, right place, right time. Um, you know what I mean? Like, Black Eyed Peas came out here for a visit. Stopped in at Redfern, which is where I was knocking around a lot at the time. And, um, yeah, a little freestyle session type thing broke out. Like, they wanted to see, you know, what was happening in Redfern. And, yeah, at the end of it, um, they hit me up. Like, they liked what I was doing and shit. And they hit me up and asked me to go out there and work on a song. So I, I went out there. Yeah, went out there and, and done a song with the lads. How long were you there in total? It must have been a good experience, eh? Yeah, bro, I was, I was fucking mad. So the first time I was there for, <clears throat> I think it was two weeks. 
and then went back again, launched the song, kicked it back there for a few days. It was, it was mad, man. Like when we launched the song and whatnot. So that was my first time. Like, oh, actually, no, it wasn't my first time. It was my second time leaving the country and shit. But so done the song, it was released like a few months later, a year later or something like that. And um, yeah, the lads rang me up and said, "Do you want to come out for for the launch and whatnot?" I was like, "Yeah, I can know." Um, but I got a big family, you know, I've never, never been on a plane before, so they ended up flying, flying the, my family over and, yeah, we launched it and whatnot. Then that would have been a good experience, say, getting your whole family to kind of see what you've done over there. And- yeah, yeah, it was, it was fucking mad, man. It was, um, especially, like, for my youngest brother, he was, like, what, I mean, shit, four or five, something like that. Yeah. And then he gets off the plane and he's, like, seen the yellow taxis and shit, and he goes, oh, this is like Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah, but one thing I've noticed about you is you're always, like, kind of, like, you're very cultural in your music as well. Mm. Right. What, where, where did that stem from? Obviously, you're an ind- indigenous man, and you feel like, you know, always, like, rapping for your people and that. Yeah, Um. so it's just, like, just being a black man, like, it's, um, I don't even try to do a bra, it's just, like, that's my experience, it's my life, it's my truth, you know what I mean? So, like, it, yeah, it just comes comes across in my music naturally because that's uh, that's who I am. Right, because there's mm. not many, many like, Aboriginal fellas in the game, right? Or is that some? Um, there, there's a few, and there's been a few for a minute, but, like, you know, there's always room for more, you know what I mean? Well, you know, like, guys like Briggs, smashing it, like, he's been, you know, on the forefront for, ye- for years, doing his thing, um, even trials, like, over there with the Funkles, you know, like guys been around for a minute and, but yeah, like, um, yeah. How's that been under, because you actually work with Briggs, right? Yeah, bro, yeah, so like that's, that's the big bro, you know what I mean? Um, so I'm signing his label and stuff and. Uh, how does it feel like having that kind of mentorship from someone that's been in, in the music for a while? Yeah, fucking mad, like when, when you got someone like, like Briggs in your corner, like, yeah, like, you, you know, you're sorted. Like, he knows what he's doing. He's been in the game a long time, and he's, um, he doesn't fuck around. Like, he's, um, yeah, he wants the best from everyone, and, like, he, he knows how to get it. Yeah. Right. Is there any kind of difficulties in the music industry, being, like, someone from your background and, you know? Yeah, bro, 100%. Like, there's a million, a million things. Like, even shit that you don't know about, like, ingrained shit, you know? Like, us speaking our truth is, is, is uncomfortable, you know what I mean? Even... When we're not trying to be, it just it just is because, you know, the way the media portrays us and and the history we have with white Australians, you know what I mean? Like it, it's uncomfortable. Um, so it's, there's always stuff like, yeah, all of that. The industry was, you know, filled with a lot of a lot of white fellas. That you know what I mean in in the early years and and still now. But like, the past I'd say two or three years, like um, us black fellas and you know. Islanders and Africans and all that, like, uh, we're cutting through now. We can't fucking be denied anymore, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, yeah, we um, still got a long way to go, but we're getting there. Because the majority of what's blowing up right now is kind of like people of colour, right? Would you agree? Yeah, man, yeah, yeah. And it's good shit too, like, not the token happy shit, you know what I mean? Like, one, four boys, like, what they're doing is fucking, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, the biggest in the country. Uh, Leroy, again, another black fella, like... No one's fucking topping that, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Like, how, pr- how proud are you of Leroy? Being being from your background, you know? And him being an indigenous man, you being an indigenous man and seeing where he is now and how, where he came from. Yeah, fucking super proud of him, man. Like, yeah. Um, you know, being around him in the early days and whatnot and then seeing what he's doing now, like, fucking, like, it blows me away, eh? It's like, that's mad and he's... You know, he hasn't forgotten where he's came from either. Like, the last still hits me up and wants to go get a feed of clams and shit, but, like, fucking, it's his shout this time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know what I mean? Like, he's he's over there doing his thing, fucking repping, um, yeah, holding it down. Like, it's, it's dudes like that with a story, you know, like Leroy's story that'll really push the next bunch of little black fellas coming through, you know what I mean? Like, you know? Yeah. It's kind of like um, a role model for the for the youth, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It's all about like you know levels and where you take it to. Like Briggsy took it to this level and he's still fucking pushing and taking it. You know, doing his thing and then Leroy's taking it to this level. Like it's just like you know the progression. 
and the, the next one will come through and he will take it even further. And that's that's what it's about, you know what I mean? 100%. Talk about um your song that you released like a while ago. It's called um, Always Was, Always Will Be. Yeah, so that one was like... <clears throat> always Was, Always Will Be is like a, a very known thing for black fellas. Like, this is this is our land. You know, that's, that's fact, so you can't fucking deny that. Um, so it was like, it was kind of something that set up protests and whatnot. Always Was, Always Will Be Aboriginal land. Um, so yeah, uh, me and the Jeter boys, like, we've been tight for years and we've always spoken about doing something and, um, yeah, we ended up collabing on a t-shirt, um, which like featured that, uh, saying always was, always will be and then from there they ended up, made a song out of it and whatnot and, yeah, yeah. Because you actually, like, I heard you, like, speaking, like, a bit of your slang in that. Yeah. And, like, making references in regards to Jeter up and that. How did that relationship build up between you guys? Um, so I just... Uh, I first met Bo from G Up through just one of the fundamentals kind of introduced us and we you know became mates and whatnot. Then I met Big Jake Parker there through Bo and then again with Pesty Benny Williams met him through the other boys and like just just mates you know what I mean like we we eat together we we kick it you know what I mean it's just like just working with the boys um and yeah putting the slang in there like that's that's another big thing for me like being authentic and talking the way we talk, you know what I mean? Like, as black fellas, we, we talk different. Um, and then seeing now our, our shit get out there is, is, um, is mad. Especially now, like, cause going, you know, me going through school and that, like, I call all my cousins bra and, you know, sis and cousin and whatnot. All the white kids used to fucking tease us for uh, for that. Like, oh, why do you call everyone your cousin? You're not related to everyone. Or why do you call him bra? He's not your brother. It's like, now fucking look. You know, it's a you're very, all talking like us. You know what I mean? Very in, influential is like easy to catch kind of slang. So, I guess it just flooded the street with it. True. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, all all the fucking slangs. You all like the way we talk. Gunjis, doob, fucking. You know what I mean? Like, run run through that. What does ganji mean? What does doobs mean for people who don't know? So gunjis is cop coppers. Doobs are the girls. Yeah, it's just little things like that. Is there any more slang that we should know about? Just um, Dory. What is that? <laughs> uh, Google that one. <laughs> it should should pop up. Like yeah, just little things like that. Um. Um. Also, seen that you got a, a pretty solid relationship with the Triple One Boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How yeah. did that form itself? Um. So. Uh, me and Triple One kind of became tied over a hum. Uh, big sound. So, like, Big Sound, a few years ago, was the first time, like, we got to kick it together. So, like, we were the Sydney boys in Brisbane, you know what I mean? So, like, we rolled together, um, just a, you know? Um, yeah, it's that um, Sydney vibe, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, and then after that, I was playing Falls Festival with Briggs, and the boys were on the festival. So, like, we were hanging a bit and running amok and whatnot, and then that's kind of how the relationship built, and that's, yeah, that, that's the homies. Yeah. And um, you guys got any music together or no? Um, yeah, man, we've worked on a few things. Me and Marty got a fucking stash, bros. We got we got a heap of fucking tunes tucked away there. So hopefully get those out soonish. Yeah. Yeah. Now with your song that's dropping soon, what what, um, what expectations do you have for it, and like what's what's your aim with it? Um, man, I hope it kind of hits. You know what I mean. Hope it slaps, slaps as much as the original fucking fight. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just, for me, it's just like I'm just doing, doing me, you know what I mean? Like just being a black fella, making fucking black fella tunes. Um, just, yeah, being, being honest, you know what I mean? Like the shit, it's a very energetic song. Um, fucking, yeah, it's a hard one. It's a hard one, that's for sure. Cause yeah. I seen it in um, some of the... In one of the little snippets that I seen on Insta, you got, you got snakes in the video, is that correct? Yeah, bro. So we are down, like, so where my mum's from is a little, it's a mission uh, further down the now, it's called Wallinger Lake. So we went and shot the video down there on my mum's, on my mum's home, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, bro, there's fucking snakes running around there, there's fucking horses, there's mission dogs, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. We we're there filming, and one of the lads fucking goes down the road, and comes back with two fucking big pythons and that. So, yeah. So he actually caught him from the bush, or did he have him stashed somewhere? I don't know, bro. I didn't ask, but the lads aren't known for fucking catching snakes down there. So yeah, I reckon one was 
one might have been a pet, one might have been, well, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Right. Now, being someone in your, like, influence has been in the game for a bit, like, what's, what's your take on how it is right now? It's, it's fucking exciting. I don't know. It's never felt like this. It's never felt like this before. It's, um, yeah, the, the quality, the quality's fucking right up there. Not to say that it never was, but, like, it's a, it's a different sound, different, different quality, and it's mad fucking seeing and hearing people that fucking look like me and sound like me, you know what I mean? Like, uh, as a youngster coming up, so, like, my cousin who taught me, um, he was half Aboriginal, half Maori. So, I always gravi gravitated towards the, um, the New Zealand shit. So, like, I was listening to a lot of, um, Smash Proof, Savage, Scribe, all of that stuff, like, Nisian Mystic, so, um, yeah, that, that was shit, you know, across the water, and we didn't really have that here at the, at the, at the time, like, we did, but it wasn't as predominant as it was over there, and now to see it here now, is like, yeah, fuck yeah, like, we're here now, you know, we're, yeah. Now, before we wrap up, is there any, like, kind of final words you'd like to say to someone out there, maybe from Nara, some kid out there that probably was in your footsteps, trying to figure it out? Yeah, man, like, don't listen to the fucking bullshit that's all, you know? Like, cunts want to put limits on you and tell you you can't do this and do that. Like, fuck that. Like, yeah, go out there and do what the fuck you want. You know what I mean? If, if you got that vision, you got that dream, you got that drive, you fucking go and get it. That's as simple as that. Man, yeah, Nookie, well, I appreciate you coming on DM me, huh? Nah, heck of cheers, bro. No worries.